Next question is from Anna Schott. How much do you think about your branding or marketing in order to appeal to both men and women? Oh, this is a fun one that we yeah. wrestle with our marketing team and have, wrestle. we have for, uh, what, three years now. This was a really hard thing for us to accept. Um, and what I mean by that is, you know, when we hired our marketing team, this was one of the first things they wanted to do was, okay, we have to, you know, market the maps program to women then we need to market it to men and so let's change the colors of it let's do this and this and let's and we're like oh it was like nails on the chalkboard right. uh for us and i i've i've come full circle on this and have a, a, a greater understanding of what this is like and let me explain how how it, how it makes sense to me now and why i'm a little more receptive and accepting to allowing our market team to go after and target uh, like women specifically, even though I know that, okay, that work, that program would also work for a man. Same workout. Right. Same workout for a man. It reminds me of when you, and you guys, I know you guys can relate to this. When you got the client and they come in and they, they spend a lot, they invest in you uh, for six months plus, and they come in and they tell you what they want. I want you to train me six days a week, Adam. Um, I don't want to do any of these exercises. I'm going to keep yeah. my my, no my Sunday fun Sunday fun day. I don't want to cut out this, mm. and you know I don't want to do any gimmicky. Mm. And they, they give you like I all these Pop-Tarts. things. And in your head, as a trainer, you know if you're if you're veteran at all and you've done this enough times, you're going like, okay, yeah, I'm changing all that shit for sure. You know, you know, eventually I'm going to get rid of that. Eventually I'm not going to allow them to train that much. Eventually, but I also know that I'm in a service business. This person just met me. This is what they're here for. This is what they're spending their money. So I got to kind of give them what they want and say, okay. And then after I've got their commitment, now I have to build trust with them with my knowledge and experience and value, and then eventually be able to unpack and unravel all these myths that they believe to be true. But I first have to grab their attention or first agree with them just to get them. And then I can start to influence them and explain to them, listen, the same program for you is the same program that I'm going to do for the girl who wants to do this. So it's not it's not a different. But when you search on Google, you know when a you know a girl across the world who's never heard of Mind Pump gets online and and wants to find the perfect workout or the perfect exercise for her to be, she types it in that way. Mm-hmm. She types it in as you know best ab workout for women or you know best butt exercise for women. Like she searches that way and if we refuse to find a way to kind of mold to market to them like that We'll never get that person. I'll never be able to influence her and educate her on how it really works. And so over the last three years, we've had to think a lot about this and find ways that, you know, how can we market outside of Mind Pump very specific to the person that's probably searching a topic all the way down to their sex, to what what they want to do as far as their goals and appeal to them to get their attention to then get them to hopefully to listen to the show and allow us to educate them on how it really works. It's all about communication. When I was a a young trainer, if a client came to me and said, I'm not taking this food out, I'm not doing that, I'm not doing this, I'm not going to squat, I'm not going to deadlift, I'm not going to overhead press, not doing those movements. Old trainer, or excuse me, young Sal, where I first started, would have been like, well, I'm sorry, we have to do those things. Here's why. Squats are the best. Now you got to cut that food out because this is how what. Older, more wise, uh, wiser Sal says this. Look, we don't have to do anything you don't want to do. That's it. Yeah. We don't got to do anything you don't want to do. Now I know my goal is to get you to the point where you want to do those things. Yeah. That's what a real trainer does. Because the, the, the young, novice, not wise Sal would lose 20 or 50% of the people. And now I can't help them at all. Now they're doing nothing. They're mm-hmm. not doing anything at all. Mm-hmm. So here's the struggle. The struggle is marketing team says – if you market this program to just women and make it look like it's for just women, you'll sell more programs. That's not going to work on me. That doesn't work on us because we're going to look at them and be like, sorry, we're not going to compromise our integrity just to sell more programs. And then we all sat down and it took us a while and we thought about, wait a minute, let's take a step back. There's a lot of people. Now they're going to go, these people that we're not you know, marketing to the way that they like to be marketed to are going to go buy some crappy workout right. program. Find yeah. somebody else's. That's not going to work. It's not going to be effective. They're going to either hurt themselves or they're going to slow their metabolism down or all the pitfalls. And what's our overarching goal? Our overarching goal is to truly help people. So why don't we talk to them the way that they want to be talked to? Mm-hmm. Then when they come in, we train them the right way. So really that's what it boils down to is marketing to specific people is less about, in our case, it's not about 
fooling people. It's all about come over here. We'll train you the right way. Fine. You want something yeah. that says it's just for you? That's what it says. Yeah. But it's also for these other. What people do the too. numbers actually tell us of who's responding? You know, it's like let's look at that. And like look, there was a big gap uh, that we had to face that uh, of people we weren't reaching. Uh, like you're alluding to, it's and that's that's troubling to us because that's really our mission is to be able to uh, you know start that conversation at least. Right. And if I can't start that conversation, then you know what kind of breakthroughs are ever going to happen? And it's so frustrating because uh, we know the big leaders in our space and, and the gimmicks and and all these different like tactics that they use that are just so dishonest and uh, are just uh, like really just pr promising the world and not delivering any of the results. And, and we know that our, our greatest value is that w like, if you actually go through the content and you go through, uh, you know, what we actually have put together, like this is what actually is going to produce the results, but, but how do we do this? And so it's, we've had to get really creative and we still do have standards. I mean, there's things we don't use. Like we don't use the whole, uh, you, you know, switch it out with, um, you know, the transformation picks and this and that and the other, which are very, very powerful tools. Uh, so there's other ways to do it with reviews and there's other ways to do it with testimonials where people are like really honestly talking about what we're promoting. So uh, I think that, um, <laughs> again, we could use help with this, uh, you know, from, from everybody that listens in terms of just spreading the word uh, more than anything it's a it's a fine dance that you know we've had to do as far as you know keeping our integrity and what's important to us but then also recognizing that what we're scaling is is much bigger than just ourselves and recognizing that not everybody who buys a program from mind pump listens to mind pump mm. uh in fact there's a, a large percentage of people now uh, that don't even listen to the show that own programs of ours and don't know who the fuck Sal, Justin, and Adam are. Mm -hmm. And in and like to Sal's point, if we don't find a way to market or get to those people, then somebody else will. Somebody else who will appeal to what they want to do and who most likely won't have the knowledge that we have and will give them some shit product that probably won't work for them and they'll stay in that cycle. So, okay, we'll speak to you the way you want to hear information right now, to get your attention. And it, it does. It reminds me exactly what I had to do. And that's what got me with our marketing team to finally kind of go like, okay, I understand this because I do remember this was a challenge for me in my early 20s. And when I finally overcame it was exactly what Sal said. I learned to agree. You know, that's like the first rule of overcoming these objections is to agree with them. Like, yeah, yeah, no, if you don't want to do that, we don't have to do any of those things. Yeah. We only have, we'll only do what you want to do. Right. But deep mm -hmm. down inside, I know that if I'm going to really change this person's life, I've got to get them to do all those things. But the, w the way to do it is not to argue with them the first interaction that you have with them. It's to slowly convince them. And that's what the podcast, the email dripping, the YouTube channel, the blogs that we write like crazy. That's the, the idea is like, we'll use whatever net we can to get them in into the circle and then let's start to inundate them with all the really good information and slowly start to convince them to make them want to go oh okay Look, you got here's yeah, the deal the light bulb has to come on in their own head yeah here's the deal okay this is what we're this is what we're fighting against okay here on one side the the fitness industry monster that says take this pill and lose 30 pounds in 30 days or follow this workout um, and in you know in 2 weeks look like this right that's what they're saying and on this side, we're saying, hey, you're going to have to make some long-term fundamental changes with your habits, with diet. You're going to have to work out for a long time, and it's a slow process. you got to fix imbalances and work on stability and slowly build strength and then over time train your body. How in the hell are we going to sell that over the other guy? How are we going to beat them? People want the easy lie. They don't want the hard truth, right? So how do we beat them? We have to outsell them. That's the first step. We got to do a better job at getting people's attention and selling the truth better than they can sell a lie. You know how hard that is? Yeah. That is a it's hard a thing. I'll give you, look, I'll give you an example of, of, of how, uh, and this is what, by the way, we developed this over years of training clients. This is what you learn as a trainer. If you do this for decades, eventually you learn how to sell the truth better than the other guy can sell the lie. Is if You'll have to learn that. Otherwise, you'll always fail over and over and over again. At some point, you realize... I got to change the way I'm saying what I'm saying because I'm losing. I'm not winning this battle. I'll give you a good example, okay? Um, eating in a way to benefit you that makes you healthy, truly healthy, developing a good relationship with food, 
gives you better health. Okay, that's great. Sounds real nice. Am I going to reach the person who's listening right now that just like, I just want to look good. I want to look good and I want to get there fast. I really mm-hmm. don't care about that other stuff right now. I'm, you know, big deal. No, I'll worry about that later. I just want to look good. No, I'm not going to get that person. So how do I get that person? I say this instead, which is also true. By the way, we're not lying. We're always telling the truth. We're just doing it in a way that's going to sell it a little bit more effectively. So here's my example. If you train and eat in a way that is truly making you healthy, the side effect of that is you're going to look really good. If all you do is eat and train to make yourself look good, eventually your health suffers and so do your looks. So now the person who's listening and all they care about is how they look, now their ears perk up. Oh, wait a minute. So if I do the healthy thing, I'm going to look better. Let me, let me listen to this, what this guy has to say. Now I got you. Now I can start to teach you how to do this properly, and I've helped you. Otherwise, we're totally screwed, and the mm-hmm. fitness industry will remain to be a problem of health, not a solution for health. We'll keep fishing.